So I've been watching a lot of Britain's Best Bakery on Prime and um, it smells so good. I, um, I'm really jealous of their baking because it's all with gluten flour and I can't eat that and it's so, so disappointing. So I was inspired by the show to try and figure out how to make something like a meat pie and be able to tuck into it too without having gluten. So I'm going to show you how I make the bread dough for this meat pie or actually a calzone and um, it's actually pretty simple and it comes out really nice. Even friends who don't eat gluten-free food love this recipe. First off, I'm going to heat my water. I have filtered water here and I've got plenty here so that I know I'll have enough even once it boils. Um, one error a lot of people make will just measure out the water and put it in and then once it starts boiling you won't actually have enough water to do what you need to do. So all I need to do is get this up to 110 degrees. So I'm just going to keep my candy thermometer in there until it's a little bit over 110 and then I'll take it off the heat. I'm going to put my mixer bowl on my scale and I know that my recipe calls for three and a half cups of flour but what it also says is that you can just go with a 19 ounce bag. Since I can weigh it out on my scale I'm just gonna go with 19 ounces because that's actually a lot more accurate than measuring it out scoop by scoop. So if I look here, it's at zero ounces with my bowl in there. So I'm just going to keep adding flour until I hit 19 ounces. There we go. I'm now going to set this in the mixer and put my spatula mixer on there. And now I'm going to get my yeast out. There we go. I'm going to put in two and a quarter teaspoons. So I need to insert some information in here. I'm not just pouring random flour into the mixing bowl. I'm actually using Pamela's bread and baking mix or just plain old baking bread baking mix. Um, they've changed the name of it a few times over the last few years. But what's different from the pancake mix that you guys might be familiar with is that it doesn't have the rising agent in it. And it's almost a cup for cup mix, but I tend to use it mostly for only what Pamela's website recommends it be used for. It's not necessarily a cup for cup flour, although I've used it as cup for cup in a few recipes and it turns out just fine. My recipe calls for one and a half cups warm water and you do not want to exceed 110 degrees so I have I've transferred my candy thermometer to the the bowl I'm going to mix the yeast into and I'm just gonna watch it here until it gets down to 110 I've actually burned a lot of yeast in the past because I didn't have a thermometer to tell me how the temperature was and I was just guessing. And either it would ruin the yeast, it would kill the yeast, 
or it wasn't warm enough and it wouldn't activate the yeast. So this has really helped me be more um, precise about baking. Baking is a lot more about chemistry and not so much about, you know, personal taste. So we're going to let that cool down just a little more and then we'll move on. Okay, it's 110 degrees Fahrenheit, not Celsius. And I'm going to put two and a quarter teaspoons of yeast. I'm just going to sprinkle it into the water. And this is really precise. Two and a quarter. <laughs> because when I pour it out, there's going to be a little residue in there. Uh, yes, very precise. Alright, so now I take this out and I'm just gonna, I'll use this, I'm just going to stir this up a little bit. Try not to let the yeast stick to the sides of your bowl because that's yeast you're, use, you're losing when you mix it into the, the flour. Okay. So there's, there's the water mixture. I'm going to start the mixer. Actually, as low as I can get it. So now I'm just going to pour the water in slowly. And remember, this doesn't have gluten in it, so it's not necessarily the end of the world if it gets kind of beat up a lot because it's not trying to activate the gluten or anything. Okay, see how that looks? It's not completely mixed in, but now I'm going to add the olive oil. This is a quarter cup of olive oil. And it's going to make it look like it's never going to mix together. The first time I did this, I was a little worried it wasn't going to mix. But it will mix together, just give it enough time. Okay, see how it, you can't really see the olive oil residue anymore? It's sticky when you touch it. It kind of leaves stiff peaks. Um, so let's go ahead and stir it just a little bit more. Okay, so this is looking pretty good. I like that consistency. It's really sticky dough and that's how it's supposed to be. I'm going to scoop it out into a, an oiled pan or bowl and let it rise for one to two hours. If you keep your water really warm and you have a candy thermometer and you can be precise about it, it's going to rise a lot faster than if you used water that was say 100 degrees or less. So um, I'll show you what it looks like when it's in the bowl. You can oil your pan however you want. I used grapeseed spray oil. I like it because it really doesn't have any sort of taste residue and it's a very light oil that coats the inside of the, the bowl. I'm going to dump it in. It's very sticky. Cover it with um, plastic wrap and let it sit for an hour.
had a get together the other night and we, um, I made the dough, the calzone dough and rolled it out and each person was able to go through and put their own individual filling in and it was a really fun time um, and there were a lot of really positive um, comments about it. So um, I'm going to show you how to do it. Um, first of all, I'm using cup for cup. It's pretty easy to find in most grocery stores. Um, I'm just going to sprinkle it out. And I'm going to also coat my hands so that when I grab a ball of dough, it doesn't stick to me as bad. So I'm going to make it about the size of a tennis ball and then pat it into a circle and flip it over that way it's not going to stick as much and just roll it and see how it kind of slides on the table or the counter you want it to stay in the sliding type um, I don't know. You just want it to slide because if it doesn't slide anymore, it's most likely stuck to the countertop. And gluten-free dough is very picky about how it reacts to being rolled and pulled. It's not like a regular flour that stretches really easily. So you see how it's about, I don't know, about 10 inches in diameter. That's about what you want. I'm going to grab a piece of parchment paper. I'm just going to slide the dough onto the parchment paper. And it is ready to be filled with wonderful filling. So to seal the calzone shut, I'm just going to dab a little bit of olive oil along the edge. And this just makes it so that it's a little more sticky and the flour isn't keeping it from sticking the top to the bottom. So I'm just going to gently fold this over. See how this goes. And you want to try and at least squeeze the two the the two sides together enough so that they're not going to pop open while baking. The other thing you want to try and do is make sure that your ingredients are pretty dry. So, like sun-dried tomatoes or something, you want to make sure that those get strained out. Um, any chicken, you don't want it wet when you're doing. And there's the calzone. I think I put too much in here. <laughs> yeah. 
next time. Well, you're pressed out to about 20 inches in diameter. <laughs> you need something about the size of a softball. Make a monster cousin. I mean, you caught. So these things go onto a hot pizza stone in a 425 degree oven. And you can drag them on, which is really nice to be able to do. So we can usually fit about three per pizza stone. And what's nice about this parchment paper is I don't have to worry about it causing problems during baking. There we go. And that's a convection bake oven, so it's not a problem that I have two very close layers. These are such good calzones when they're finely done. Um, it does take a little bit of time, but they are just amazing, and I hope you find some time to try them yourself.